God would accept the shed blood of an innocent lamb. Now, the people, would, to show people how serious their sin was, they would have to get a, a, the best lamb of their flock. They would have to take an unblemished, perfect lamb, and that was painful to the people because who wants to lose the best thing? Imagine if God demanded, you know, Heroes. okay, your best Everyone's car, lamb. Every, Heroes, if you right? sin, then lamb God is, gets to destroy lamb. your best car. Well, Heroes. you wouldn't want that. And that was painful to those people. Yes. But after Come decades and centuries and centuries of that Lord, animal sacrifice, Lord, what lamb. ended up happening is people weren't, weren't taking their own lamb. They were just going to somebody who raised lambs, found a lamb. They would just have a big stockpile of, of unblemished lambs. They would go and throw them some coins, and, and then they would kill that lamb that they'd only known for, for a half an hour, and it meant nothing to them. Now imagine, this is how serious sin is to God. Imagine if because I sinned, imagine if because I sinned, uh, God commanded that my pet, that one of my pets would have to die. Now, I would take, I would, uh, I would take that very seriously, because imagine if I sinned knowing that one of my pets would have to die, then I would have to come home and explain to my wife and kids that I sinned and now the dog's got to die. They'd be broken, they'd be in tears, they'd be torn apart. And, and they'd say, well, if that's what God commands, but they'd be broken, and so would I, to have to kill my, you know, kill my dog. And then what if the next day I went out and sinned again, and then I said, oh, so, uh, honey, kids, I got bad news. Now we got to kill the cat. My kids and my wife would be going, what are you doing? What are you doing? Stop sinning. You're killing off all our pets. It would mean something. But if I just eventually just thought, well, I'll just go to the pound and get some stray dog. If I just, I'm just going to go to the pound and get a stray dog. Then I can sin all I want. Uh, well, then that's, there's no more pain in that. Well, so God said, enough of all these animal sacrifices. Enough of the animal sacrifices. Enough of all this nonsense. It means nothing to you. I'm going to send, I'm going to come down myself, and I, Jesus Christ, God in the flesh, came, lived a perfect life, lived a perfect life. When who's who's worse, the guy telling fairy tales or the guy standing there listening to them? <laughs> All right, let's get back to it. All right, so this is how serious God's sin is, sin is to God, is that he comes down in the flesh to die to be a, sa a sacrificial lamb. When John the Baptist saw Jesus coming, he said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. So Jesus is that one-time perfect sacrifice, so there's no more requirement of a bunch of lambs and bulls and goats to be killed, Jesus Christ died on the cross as an atonement for my sin and for yours. So what? So let me let me give you something in case they pull you away. There you go. I'll take it. I grew up a Methodist. But are you are, are you willing? Are, are you a Christian now? Are you a born again Christian? Are you living holy? This is crap you're preaching. Uh, all right. Why? Why? What sin is it that you have in your life that you love more than your own eternal soul? It's not. Yes. It's, we're all sinners. And you're, like, we agree on I am a former sinner. Currently, I am a saint there's through no, the shed blood of Jesus Christ. There's no proof for any of this. That's the problem. No proof for what? For any of the bombs. God has given all men everywhere at minimum two ways by which to know Him. You live in caves. What happens is most of y'all out here is bitten in the face of Jesus Christ. And you're taking the, the very name of Jesus in vain because you claim to be a Christian. But you live like the world. You speak like the world. You talk like the world. You live like the world. Now many people out here today claim to be Christians don't believe they got to give up sin. I'm going to go ahead and nail that to the wall. He says, He that loves him does not commit sin for his seed remaineth in him. What do I mean? He says, Everyone that named him the name of Jesus Christ depart from iniquity. Guess what? We have to turn away from sin. This is what I said in five seconds. Thirteen seconds little prayer at the altar don't mean I can go and live how I want to now. Guess what? I have to keep his commandments. This is the holy God I'm speaking about. We will stand before a holy God one day and give account of everything we've done in our prayer. Repent. <laughs> the repentance part is where most people got it all. Repentance.
Christians don't ask for forgiveness. Repentance is turn away from your sins. And that constant decision, I'm going to walk after God and not after my flesh desires. Ask for forgiveness in the fruit of repentance. Yes, I know I need a Savior. Yes, I know I'm a sinner. Now I need to ask His forgiveness. I need to ask Him into my life. I need to be baptized. I need to be filled with His Spirit. Glory to God. You know what's wrong? People don't finish the steps. They say one little prayer and then they turn around, go out the very next day, living like a, like they always do. You are free to walk away. Let me make an announcement to all of the heathen that are raging. All the heathen that are raging around me, I have an announcement. I do not have a chain tied to any of your feet. You are welcome to walk away. In fact, let me warn the wicked who refuses to repent. If you absolutely refuse to repent and come to Christ, then I, the best suggestion I have for you is to walk away from me because your condemnation will be much more severe. Because if I keep telling you the words of God and you still die as an unrepentant sinner, then your judgment will be much more severe. So if you're willing to repent, then stick around. If you're unwilling to repent, then I would recommend walking away and go eat, drink, and be merry. All right, what's your question? I can't hear you. What? If God made me who I am, what's wrong with you? I don't know you. I don't know what's wrong with you. What? You tell me. What's wrong with you? Are you a drunkard? Do you like getting drunk? Uh, okay, then you're a drunkard. That's one. Uh, are you a porn freak? Do you like porn? All right, that's two. Uh, are you a liar and a thief? Okay, that's three and four. Uh, let's see. Uh, what else? Are you okay? Let's see. Are you a sexual pervert? That's on this list. I'm liking. Okay. Uh, then there's lots of things wrong with you. You're a drunkard, a liar, a thief, and a pervert. Uh, so I would say you need to get right with God today. You need to get right with God today. God is willing to. God is willing to uh, to bring you back to bring you back to His kingdom, a place you don't deserve to be. But it's only if you will repent of your sins. You got to give up your drunkenness, give up your porn watching, give up your lying and your theft. You need to get right with God. Are you willing to do that? Are you willing to give up your drunkenness? Are you willing to give up your drunkenness? No. Okay. Then I'm done with you. If you're not willing to give up your drunkenness, then there's no point going on. All right. Because all the heathen are raging. We are heathen. What? I can't hear you. We are heathen. I read both Bible, both versions of the Bible, the King James and the New King James. Matthew 7, 1 through 5. Jesus says, Judge not, lest ye be judged. For with what measure you use, that measure shall be given back to you. So it doesn't say it's a sin. It says that if I judge hypocritically, I'll be judged by that same measure. He says, you, he says, why do you tell your brother he has a speck in his eye when you have a log in your own? You hypocrite. First, remove the log from your own eye. Then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. So Matthew 7, 1 through 5 is not saying that the, you can't judge. It's saying you cannot judge hypocritically. If I was out here drunk telling people that they, the drunkards go to hell, I will be judged by that same measure. Jesus said in John 7, 24, that when you judge, judge with righteous judgment. Judge not by appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. There's a book in the Bible called Judges. Why would there be a book in the Bible called Judges? if no one was supposed to judge. Now, I will agree that if you are living in sin, if you're not a Christian, you're not to judge. And if you are living in sin, you're not to judge because that makes it hypocritical judgment. But I have removed the beam from my own eye so that I can see clearly to take the speck out of my brothers. Uh, 1 Corinthians 2, 15 says this. Don't touch my stuff. If a spiritual man judgeth all things, but he himself is rightly judged of no man. 
So I am a spiritual man, so I'm rightly judging no man. I don't come out here on a box with a bullhorn telling people to do things that I haven't turned away from. You need to do. No, I don't live a lifestyle of sin. I'm 45. I have sinned many times in my life. Many, to my disgrace, I used to be a wicked sinner. I don't know. I don't keep track of such things. But sin should be an sin should be the absolute exception to the rule, not not the rule. There's too many people out here. That's why I wore this shirt. I have lots of shirts I can wear. And I wore this one today that says stop sinning because I have found that the biggest problem in Hickory is that people want to declare themselves a Christian and think they can go on sinning and God doesn't care. God is going to punish every single wicked and sinner. God is not a respecter of persons. When you said your little 20-second prayer in Bible camp when you were 14, that did not allow you to go live 80 years of your life as a drunken, lying fornicator. No, God, God knows every single sin you commit, whether you've said a prayer or whether you haven't. When Jesus spoke to the seven churches in the book of Revelation, Jesus spoke to the seven churches in the book of Revelation. Look at Revelation chapter 2 and 3. Jesus is speaking to the churches, not to unsaved people, but to churches. He tells the church at Sardis that I have only found few among you who have not soiled their garments. Only a few among you who have not soiled their garments, and they shall be found worthy. But the others in the church of Sardis had soiled their garments with sin and they were not worthy. They will be written out of the Lamb's book of life and they will be cast into hell on that day. So that is, that is the, uh, that's the truth. Uh, Jesus spoke in Revelation 3 to the church at Laodicea. The church at Laodicea, Jesus said, How I wish you were either hot or cold, but because you are lukewarm, I will spew you out of my mouth. So as a paraphrase, God is saying, lukewarm Christians make Jesus puke. You blow your smoke in my face when Revelation 14 says the smoke of your torment will ascendeth up forever and ever. The saints, the saints of God, the angels, and God himself will rejoice for all of eternity as the smoke of the torment of those in hell ascendeth up forever and ever. So, if you claim to be a Christian and you are not sharing your faith, you better realize that one day you are going to rejoice as the smoke of people you know rises up into heaven and you will rejoice because God's just judgment was finally revealed.